So we know the top pair, at least to start training camp, and we have to continually hammer that home because, wow, things can change in an absolute hurry from the first day of fitness testing till the puck drops on the regular season on that Thursday night in Buffalo. But we know it's going to start with Shabbat and Zub and then Sanderson and Travis Hamanick. And you mentioned Eric Brandstrom's name. He was one of two restricted free agents. Not anymore, Pilsy. Breaking news. Breaking news. As we're recording, we see the Ottawa Ooh. Senators announcing on Twitter that they've signed defenseman Eric Branstrom to a one-year contract, which holds an annual average value. And I guess it's easy to find out the average when it's one year. He will be making $900,000. Your immediate reaction to the deal. That is low. Uh, I think both of us thought it would it would pass a million dollar uh, a value here. But... The thing to consider is, and we've talked about this, Brandy didn't have a whole lot of leverage, which is why I kind of thought that this deal would be the first one, quick, easy, tidy piece of business. Ross, my my thoughts and assumptions on this is the Ottawa Senators basically went to him and his agent and said, here's your qualifying offer. Take it or leave it. If you don't want to take it, we'll wait. And I think that's what's happened is they gave the qualifying offer. Maybe negotiations were were tried by Brandy and his agent. Obviously, those didn't go where they wanted. The sense stayed firm. And now you got to sign a deal sometime. Otherwise, you're not playing or you're waiting for a trade, which it, we've heard the trade value for Eric Branson was not high either. So that's not a great strategy for him and his agent. So I think they just went with it. And uh, Branson's got a lot to prove this season. That's for sure. And despite feeling like he's been in the organization forever, he's actually just coming off his entry-level contract. So he is getting a raise, although not significantly. This is a one-year, one-way contract. So that means no more ability to stash him in the minors. Although yeah. now, as he's turned 23, happy belated, Branny turned 23 on September 2nd, so on Friday. But... Now it's t it's time for him to have to clear waivers if he cannot crack it in the National Hockey League. And you know that the lifetime of first-round picks is a little bit more stretched out than others where I'm sure another op opportunity would come. And we've seen some glimpses, and I need to make sure that I say that, that there have been glimpses. It's not been all bad with Eric Branstrom, but he needs to take another step in the right direction. So it's a one-year contract, $900,000. I thought he was going to get the Mete the one-year $1.1 million deal. Here's what Senators General Manager Pierre Dorian has to say. This is from the press release that accompanied the news. Quote, Eric is among our group of young players who we're looking upon to take another step forward next season. He's competitive, has an ability to efficiently move the puck, and showed well when asked to take on an increased role last season. We're hopeful that experience pays dividends for him in the year ahead. I think that's pretty well said from Mr. Dorian. I mean, Brandy moves pucks. Yes. <laughs> Pierre Dorian is also aware. But where it's interesting is when he said, uh, I forget the exact quote, I got a goldfish brain, but where he said he did well in an uh, elevated role. I don't, like, he did okay, but really he should have produced much more as a first line center, as a guy playing first power play uh, time, getting over 20 minutes a night, and as a guy who is known to efficiently move the puck. So, and if he did so well in that role, why did he only get a $900,000 one year contract? Yeah, I don't know. For, I mean, 14 assists, no goals in 53 games, dash 17. A lot of nights. You're pulling your hair out a little bit, Pilsy, when he's defending in front of the net. But I'm hopeful because you know what they say about these shorter defensemen. They've been short their whole life. They've learned how to defend around it. But he he does. This last line is crucial. We're hopeful that it pays dividends for him in the year ahead. They're saying that it's still a matter of potential of why they're keeping him around, right? To, to me, that's what it reads as. Like He's shown abilities before. But we need it consistently at the NHL level. And this is probably a make or break year. We almost said that last year in terms of getting a large opportunity because then those prime opportunities will go to Jake Sanderson this upcoming year and beyond. But now if he can settle in to be a, a fifth defenseman who can move up when when injuries come or when you know you need different matchups, 
You need, like we said, um, or like we saw last year with Thomas Shabbat and him playing together a little bit at the end of games when you need to press offensively. If he can become a situational defenseman this year, I think that's a win. And you're not really risking much with this deal under a million dollars. So I'm excited that he's in camp. I'm, I think it's crucial because didn't he miss camp in 2021 with COVID? He, yep. it, it was just a gong show up and down. He even played AHL games last year. Like come to camp, be in Ottawa, be ready to go. And let's get, let's get rolling. Cause this guy, he still has PP upside. Like he still has the amount of power play experience last year when Shabbat was out. Like some people want him on the top unit this year. Now, just in terms of the hierarchy of a locker room, that just not happening. You'd have to multiply 900,000 a few times to get to 8 million. Um, not math guys. <laughs> not math guys, but uh, we will say that. Um, I'm just glad that he's going to be in camp because if he missed camp again, that just, he's so far behind the eight ball. Yeah. And I feel like I've been pretty negative about Brandy so far. So I'll, I'll add some pillsy positivity to this. There was flashes where he looked great. Like you said, when he was playing with Thomas Shabbat, uh, when they're really trying to ramp up the offense, I thought they looked great together. Do I want them as a five on five pair permanently? No, absolutely not. But I think where Brandy really, ha he has to look at this and kind of put a chip on his shoulder. He's got to say, I thought I'm worth more. I waited to try to get a better contract. Didn't happen. If they put him on the second power play unit, he has to thrive. And there's no reason why he can't thrive on that second power play unit because finally the Sens are going to have two competent units. So I think that's a big deal. And one thing I definitely will give props to Brandy with, I thought his defending got a lot better as the year went on. Now it was a low bar to start, but it did get better. So improvement was shown. And he did a really good job of making those long outlet passes. Like he was able to hit players in stride and really basically two line passes, uh, get, the, get the offense going with some really good, accurate uh, tape to tape passes. So there's lots of positivity here for Branstrom. There's lots of potential here, but it may just take a little bit more time. I mean, everyone blooms at, uh, at their own time, right? And for Branny, a shorter, younger defenseman, we just need to be patient, I think. Let's hope he's on the, the right side on the third pair with Nick Holden on the left side and then 22 on the outside looking in. That, to me, would be my ideal as we run through it one last time here. Shabbat Zub, Sanderson, Hamannick, Holden, and Branstrom would be an adequate, as the head coach describes his decor at, an yeah. adequate start to the NHL season. But that just leaves Alex Formanton as the lone RFA unsigned. We know that there are extra outside of hockey investigation of the 2018 men or boys, I should say, uh, U20 World Junior team. And no names have come out. We're not saying he's guilty. We're not saying he's innocent. But I wonder if it will have an impact into if and when Alex Formanton's contract get signed with the length of the investigation that Bill Daly said they hope it's done by the start of the NHL season or completed, not done, but they hope that they have a conclusion. I guess we just wait.